Okay, so we'll just continue mining then. Um, we'll just mine around this uh, star and all the planets there, and I think we'll move on to the next race. Um, go and see if they're still there. Um, so let's see what's going on. Um, one more planet to go to, looks like, and uh, or oh no, two more. Um, so just this world here. There's probably going to be a bit of biodata. I don't know if I'm going to need biodata or not, but I'm just going to collect it anyway, if there is any. There we go, we might as well go and get a bit of biodata. Maybe the Melnor may be around. I'm not really sure what sort of um, stuff we'd buy from them though, um, since this is a demo, and also since our ship doesn't seem to be very upgradable at the moment anyway. Um, but who knows? Who knows what will happen? This demo is very long already, like, you know, demo... Demos normally are only like maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour long. This one we've been playing for an hour now, and I'm not really sure when it's going to end. So it's pretty cool that it's a long demo. And I also guess it depends on what you do. I mean, there's probably a trigger at some point. Uh, like maybe there's like an ending, or at least I'm told there's an ending to this. So uh, maybe we're, maybe I'm just being a little bit pedantic about sort of going around all the different planets and meeting them. But it's cool to go and see the races again. So I thought that's what we'd do. Um, and if we encounter any bugs or anything, we can uh, we can see what happens. Might be interesting. Doesn't look like there's any bugs so far though. Looks completely fine. Um, all the dialogue's pretty awesome as well. All the dialogue's done, and um, the voices. The reason the voices aren't put in is because um, some people don't like them very much. Uh, but once they're done as well, that will put put into the game. We'll get some people to do them at some point later in the game's production, and then we can get all the voices like Haze and the Shamur and things. Of course, the difficulty is that it's quite difficult to replicate some of the voices uh, in the game um, from the original because they're just so unique and if you don't do them quite right they sound completely different like the yay hat is very difficult to replicate unless you're Scottish oh what's this? Oh, it's what a delightful surprise to see our old human captain friend again we often think of you and how you aided the clans in their evolution to overthrow the Zebrite dynasty stories are told to hatchlings I know you've already told me um, we've got to go we're going to go meet the Vux now bye yeah, so I think the Vux is the next race. Uh, oh, for God's sake. Go away. Just, just go. I don't want to talk to you anymore. We've talked to like three of you already. Stop trying to look for attention here, yay hat. I'm going to the Vux. At Beta Luiten. Beta Luiten. I don't know how to pronounce it. But that's where we're going. We're going to Beta Luiten to see the Vux. They've been slave shield, as you saw in the intro. Uh, like, uh, intro uh, beginning to the game. Um, well it looks like they've got a blue slave shield, um, which is pretty cool. They had a choice of red or blue, they took blue, because the Shamur always live up to their expectations of giving people a choice when there is one to be had. So here we are, Beta Leuten, their planet one. Um, of course, I wonder what happened to um, Commander Zex as well. He's still on a planet somewhere, isn't he? I can't remember which one he's on. But maybe he's still alive somewhere. Uh, but I can't remember what planet, so unfortunately we won't be able to go and see him. Maybe he's dead. Who knows. But let's go to the starbase. Let's see what's going on. Oh, it's you. Yeah, hello Mr. Vux. How are you doing? Um, this is how we felt for 20 years, so I wonder how it's going for you. What's it like being guess. trapped above your slave-shielded world like Commander Hayes was for so long? Um, they don't have a pre precursor vessel. They're suffering from critical shortages, yeah, surely. We aren't idiots. Oh, okay. Whatever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They they don't have a precursor vessel. They have no precursor vessels. Um, there is some they are rethinking the subject, yes. their position on aliens as well. Captain, oh my God. we were minding our own Brilliant. business when the Urquan invaded. Supported by fleets of Ilrath, Unga, and Spathy, these four did not enhance our hopefulness for the goodness of unseen aliens, which was already shocked by your Captain Rand. We were given the impossible choice of fight or die a slow death under the Red Slave Shield. Through the following war, we did as we were required upon pain of annihilation. The many atrocities carried out on our people in the following war were not forgotten. Yes, do not think that between us and the Cyrene we did the most marauding. We found our own brothers and sisters among the wreckage of the ships we destroyed. Twisted, enthralled more perniciously than anything the Urquan have done. 
and in greater numbers than any paltry retaliation we inflicted upon the Cyrene in return. The war ended, and things began to look up. The Urquan's standing orders were not too onerous, and they ruled with a light touch. People began to be able to focus on the things important to them. Then, along you came. At no point did you mention the Kolar. If you had, we would surely now be seen as vital allies. But you killed a war hero and looted his planet and never looked back. Well, the next thing like we that. knew, we were overwhelmed by the Chimur. They confined us to one planet and blocked the natural light we need. In order to survive, our people live most of their lives indoors under carefully made lamps. And of course, some of us are compelled to come up here and offer assistance to the ones who imprisoned us. Not so good. Well, that's what we had to do as well, so I don't know what you're talking about. At least, yeah, exactly, Not you weren't just bombarded and all your stuff Arcon. destroyed. Such high standards you keep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just live, live with it. Live with it like that. Okay, so, um, any news? I, I wonder if they'll give us any news. That, as I am required to answer completely, the one piece of news you are not already aware of is that Zex's deviant subordinate Dax managed to escape Vox Space with a squadron of intruders before the Chmer closed in. Actually, I tell you this anyway. The Vux are much better off without depraved individuals like Dax. At least with Zex we had an ace commander. Dex just gives me the willies. Should you stumble across him in your travels, please do the right thing and dispose of him and his weirdo henchmen. Okay. Well, I guess if we find Dax, we'll just kill him, Finally. I guess. I don't know why he'd... Oh, okay. If you're going to be like that, we might as well just leave. He wasn't very happy. I don't know why. He's got a perfectly nice life. His bridge looks exactly the same as his intruder. He's just been sitting there the entire day. I didn't see his problem. He is just moaning about nothing. He is just moaning about absolutely nothing. So, it's time now to go on to the next area. Um, the Vux, nothing happened there. Nothing at all. Um, in fact, they gave us some pretty useless information. The chance of us finding Dax is so small, I think, that there's no point of even trying to look for him. But it's fine, because if we do find him, we have got the uh, we've got the thumbs up from the Vux General Commander to to just end his life. So there we go. That's good. So awesome. I'm going to go and head to Unzavalt now. <laughs> I'm a Vela, and I want to see if something's on there. There's got to be an Easter egg or something here, surely. Let's have a look what happens. We're at Vela. This is of course Unzavalt, the planet that the captain lives on, Captain Zelnik. Um, I actually spelled Zelnik wrong in the uh, chronology, but whatever. We'll not worry about that. There is a there is a uh, life source, uh, sorry, an energy source down there as well as some biologicals. Obviously, it's very watery um, on the vault, but um, at least the energy source is on the land part. That would be a bit of a fail if it wasn't. Um, if I, if I think what it is, I think it's going to be the pre precursor factory. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. Let's have a look what happens. Oh, it's, just, it's a cottage. It's like the cottage in Skyrim. Look at it, it's lovely. It's going. You've come home. Ah. Uh, <laughs> gun shopping. Don't forget to recruit more people to work on your game! Exactly! Everyone watching, if you can help Project 6014, make sure you go to the link below and help them. Because this game is going to be amazing and you can be a part of it. You can say, I was part of creating a brilliant game. So definitely go and check that out if you know C++, C++ so I've been trying to get people to do. Um, if this game hasn't done anything more than reigniting people's passion for this game, or got people into it, then hopefully it's made people want to help if they can. And that's definitely what I want people to do, is help this game finish. I mean, the amount of work that's actually been going on behind the scenes that people don't realise is extraordinary. I mean, the story in this demo is not... It's like pretty much diff complete, very much different to the story that's been planned for the full release. This is just the demo, and the whole storyline has been changed since. But it's still sort of related to the real story, so it's um, not completely spoiling uh, what's going to happen, but it's definitely a taster of what's to come. So it looks like we're about to meet the oars here. I'm guessing that's going to be an oar ship that's following me there, but I want to go over to... Um, oh no, I can't actually remember what their home planet is. Is it this one? Delta. I remember Delta being something. There was there was one that was the Tyelo homeworld, and I think it was this one actually. 
this this looks way too hot to be a planet. Yeah, it's way too hot. Um, I think that this is the Tyler one with the on the moon of the of this big planet. It's like the, it's like the second or third moon. Yeah, it's the treasure planet, isn't it? Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it's not this one. Let's just see what's happened. No, it's not this one. I, I'm pretty sure it's the treasure planet, but let's go and see. Um. Is it this one? This yeah, it is. Here we go. -like the oars! Captain has to see the oars. Happy campers can say hello to oars every day. That's right. I say three times more than bottom. Hello, camper friends. Hello, sauce eaters. How you doing? I love the sauce. You love the sauce. How are things, guys? Fun time. And oars can make games with campers and smell colors and even the playground. Soon is some war on Beanie and inferior poets spread into campers' bases to vulcanize and even leap. Oars are dancing inferior poets before, after, and soon, but not good to go. Oars paint the town every day, but fingers have right of way. And nice poetry. And inferior poets are vulcanizing, we have to go below. If you are freak out, oars can pull campers to the outside. Inferior poets are mostly inside, outside, not so. Well, I'm going to be brutally honest. I agree with what they're saying here. Um, do they have any news for us? Since several pieces, we are learning the happy camper favorite games and it's all the numbers that are right. Ah. At this level, the silly cows and campers spit the first words otherwise. Vucks are sad animals and always say to know the oars or be dissolving. Exactly. Vucks are always dancing the oars, but not better than small, so not so frumple any sooner. Now the one thing I do know is that I think dancing means fighting. That's the only oars word that I think I know. But um, thank you for the information. We'll be off. Goodbye. Be on. Only joke. Only joke. That's right. Only joke. Mm -hmm.